And yes, the rapture is the escape that the Lord has prepared for us. He says it himself. Disaster is looming. The end of the age is upon us. And when I say this, many will roll their eyes. Oh no, not again. Don't you have anything more positive to talk about? Well, I do. But we must face the truth. The writing is on the wall. We've been giving the signs. This is it. And it are Christians in particular who are rejecting this. We always hear the same things. Ah, there may be another 50 years. No one knows the day or the hour. One day for the Lord is as a thousand years, etc., etc. Churches that preach positivism and universalism are growing in numbers. They preach a different message. God is in you. You will do great things. You are a king. You have the power. You, you, you. And there may be uh, some potential and partial truth in all of that, but it should not be our main focus. Certainly not now. So what should be our main focus? The rapture? No. What then? The rapture is Jesus calling and escorting his bride into his Father's house, the kingdom of heaven. And we must realize that we are wretched sinners in need of God's salvation, which is a person, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. That through him we become his bride. Our main focus should be to be a consecrated bride who pleases him. And I've said it almost every week now, for without faith it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11.6 We must have faith. Now contrary to worldly wisdom, it's not the journey that counts. Spectacular as it may be, and I'm talking about a rapture, it's a spectacular journey. But it's the destination. To be in his presence forever. That is what it's all about. King David wrote it so eloquently in Psalm 27 verse 4. Where he says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after. And notice that he says one thing. Not two, not several, not some things. One thing. And what is that? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord for um, all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David longed for it. Why don't Christians? Why are they okay if it will be another 50 years? Who wants to be in this mess for another 50 years? No, disaster is looming. The end of the age is upon us. And the Bible is shouting God's warnings about devastating events prior to the rapture. Who wants to hear it? And we who echo these words find deaf ears. And this desperation we also hear from Jeremiah's words. When he writes in Jeremiah 6 verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. God has done everything to forewarn, forewarn us, to give us the signs, the timeline. But the people, his people, refuse to hear. Just like the children of Israel, when they reach the promised land, and I mean the first time, at the beginning of the 40 years, their unbelief kept them from entering. How many will be kept from entering now? 
now that we've reached the land, the kingdom, it's tragic. Jeremiah continues to proclaim God's warning in Jeremiah 11, verse 7 and 8. He says, For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked everyone in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Many times Jeremiah repeats God's warnings, and every time he finds deaf ears, stubborn people, and it drives him crazy, to despair. To whom shall I speak and give warning? It brings him to the point that he doesn't even want to live any longer. What is the purpose of a prophet when no one wants to hear him? But God had ordained him to be a prophet even before he was born. We can read that from Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 where it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That last uh, emphasis is on purpose. Prophet unto the nations. What we read in scripture is that he speaks to Israel and to Judah. But in reality his words are for the nations. Uh, that is from the biblical perspective. Um, everything outside the children of Israel. Everything um, apart from um, from the children of Israel. So these words, they transcend time and they are for us and for God's children in particular and for the end times in particular. And of course we can warn for the pending calamities of the tribulation, the persecution, the pains, the disease, the hunger, the disaster, the wars, but the real warning should be to prepare for God's kingdom. If one is not ready to enter the kingdom, it's like a journey without destination. Like the children of Israel who perished in the wilderness. Forty years, or less for many, but years they wandered in the wilderness. They were on a journey without a destination. It's useless. Without preparation, there is no way to reach the destination, and there is no escape, nor need to talk about an escape. And I mean, of course, the rapture with that. And when I read the uh, aggressive and even vile comments uh, regarding the rapture, whenever I bring it up, uh, it's very hard to believe that these people are prepared for God's kingdom. And I too sometimes wonder, to whom shall I speak and give warning? And it's abundantly late for warnings. The events have started. I don't know if you've watched the Middle East lately, but things are happening. The train is rolling and it's not going to stop anymore. And all the while Christians are distracted with other things that burn up their time and their energy. All the time, while they could have heeded the warnings, their minds were consumed with worldly entanglements. Will they wake up only when it's too late? Or will they not wake up at all? Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 37 through 39, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. For those, there is no escape. And yes, the rapture is the escape that the Lord has prepared for us. He says it himself, Luke 21, verse 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape 
all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Jeremiah uses the same words. He writes in uh, chapter 11, verse 11, Therefore, speaking to the unrepentant children of Israel, uh, in other words, regarding those that are not ready, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. When sudden destruction comes, people will be engaging in everyday life as if it would go on forever. But for us that should not be the case. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. It cannot be, and it should not, should not be, that our lives are business as usual, especially knowing what is coming. Jeremiah says in uh, chapter 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. There is no day like it, no time like it. This means there is nothing in all of history that we can compare it with. Jesus himself repeated this, Matthew 24, verse 21. For there sh then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. How can life be just normal to you when you know that this is just around the corner? When you know that your loved ones and most of the people around you will have to face this period and many will not survive. And when we warn them, we mostly find deaf ears. To whom shall I speak and give warning? And our brethren, many count on an escape. Many think they are worthy to escape all these things. Many say, I do not need to know about all these uh, end time prophecies. I don't want to think and talk about all this. I'm just always ready. I've heard this so many times. It's saying, in other words, let the prophets and Jesus himself just talk to themselves. Um, I, can, uh, I am okay anyway. I don't need all this information. Well, I can guarantee you, those who say that are not ready. Are not ready. They are not prepared for the kingdom. And without being prepared, there is no entrance. And the journey will be in vain. Again, Paul uses the example of the Israelites that perished in the wilderness to illustrate this. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Who wants to perish in the wilderness? Nobody. But who wants to hear about repentance, about living a consecrated life? Very few. Remember that Jeremiah was talking to God's people. And so was Paul and Jesus for that matter. The desperate ex exclamation, to whom shall I speak, was because of them, of God's people. And I echo this today. Have we taken his warning seriously? Do we love him? Are we loyal? And do we uh, desire to be like him? Do we submit our lives to him? Are we getting ready for the kingdom? The time is now. Paul writes in Romans 13, verse 11 through 14, And that knowing the time, that now is high time. Now, it's not now just time, now it's high time. High time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we uh, believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, 
not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. We must take heed. God is speaking to us. We are either worthy to escape, or we will perish in the wilderness. And yes, the escape is promised. It is many times worded differently in scripture. It is to be hidden from this earth. And it's an interesting verb, to be hidden. Because it means that uh, it's for, for a, a designated period of time. You hide something, not to have it hidden forever, but to keep it away from from someone else, for example, or to, or to protect it against a certain situation. And after that, you will take it out again. That, so that's what it means. And uh, we see that um, this, uh, this escape, this uh, hiding of God's people is mentioned quite a few times in Scripture. And uh, even in the Old Testament, because many things, the rapture is uh, only New Testament thing. Well, I've shown you many times it's uh, over... Uh, uh, all over the Old Testament as well. And, and one of the famous verses is, of course, from Isaiah 26. And I will read only verse 20, where it says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut the door about thee. Here it comes. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indigna indignation is be overpassed. And of course, if you read uh, this whole section there, you will get the full context and you understand what it's all about. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. These are the chambers or dimensions that Jesus talks about in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Uh, the mansions that he has prepared for us. And he will come and get us so that we can be with him forever. Uh, I read before from uh, Psalm 27 where King David says that this is, there is one thing he desires and that is to be with the Lord all the days of his life and uh, to, uh, to behold uh, his beauty. That is Psalm 27 verse 4. In the next verse, uh, verse 5, he writes, For in the time of trouble, that is the tribulation, uh, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. The rock, of course, is Jesus, the place of security, the strong foundation. But twice he uses here the word to hide. He shall hide me in the times of trouble during the tribulation. It's obvious. But to whom shall I speak and give warning? to God's people, to you. Seek the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul. Make sure to be found worthy to escape and enter the kingdom. And I will end with one more verse from the Old Testament where we are um, uh, promised to be hidden as a result of our um, devotion to God as a result of our faith. Seek ye the Lord. This is Zephaniah 2 verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. And that day is upon us. That's how I began. And that's how I will end. Whether you want to hear it or not, I hope you do. This is the situation we're in. This is the time. Now is the time. To whom shall I speak and give warning? I hope to you. Amen. <laughs>